Before we get into this, I want to say an absolutely massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel because today we've hit 24,000 subscribers on the Film My Run channel. Couldn't be more grateful. Thank you so much for all your support, for watching the videos, for clicking that like button, for sharing the videos with your friends. I appreciate it, I really do. So, today we're going to talk about the London Marathon. And I'm going to split the video into three different sections, three different areas that I think are important to focus on when analysing what happened. We'll deal with training. So how did my training go? What did I do well? What went badly? There's not a lot that went well, to be fair. <laughs> then we're going to talk about nutrition, um, race nutrition, primarily what did I eat during the race? Why and, and what can I learn from that? And then finally, we're going to talk about mindset and what's up here when you're running a marathon. And then right at the end of the video, I will show you me getting my medal and what happened after I crossed the line of the London Marathon. So if you watch the channel regularly, you will know that probably the main reason that the London Marathon didn't go well for me this year is because of training. Last year I had the most fantastic training block. We started in January, I went right through to April with absolutely no problems, no illness, no injuries. I did all my training weeks uh, up to the right mileage, so everything went well. I did loads of VO2 max sessions, more than I've ever done before. I did loads of slow, long, slow running, which is, you know, my 80, 20 thing that I like to do. So I don't do very much marathon pace running when I'm training, generally just slow and fast. Uh, but I do think that adding extra speed sessions in did help last year. So my plan for this year was to basically do that again and build on it. Unfortunately, as soon as we hit 2024, January the 1st, my entire family got sick. And we were sick, and I was sick, on and off for the next eight, nine, ten weeks. Um, we kept getting a flu or, the, or a cold or something like that. And then a couple of weeks would go by and we'd get a bit better, and I'd start training, and then I'd get hit by something else. And that happened five times or so, where I'd just get better and then get sick again. And uh, the whole family suffered, but obviously me with marathon training, I was hoping to not have any illness and get through a smooth marathon training block. Unfortunately, it just didn't happen. My marathon PB is 2 hours 55 minutes. And to be blatantly honest, I wanted 2.50. I wanted to train to try and get as near to 2 hours 50 minutes as I could in the London Marathon. And, you know, once we got past February and into March, I just, I knew that was, there's no way that was gonna happen. Absolutely no way I had time to put in the miles and the training to, to get anywhere near that time. Then in March, I took part in a run called the Breakfast Run in Kingston-upon-Thames. And I did 2.33 for 20 miles. And that made me think, okay, maybe I could target 3.15. So I did what I could in the final few weeks before the marathon. I did a race called the Stenning Stinger Marathon. So a full marathon distance in training on the trails, on the, in fact, on these trails that I'm running on now. Uh, did my slowest ever time for the Stenning Stinger Marathon. Got a couple more 20 milers in, including that race in Kingston. Did a few sessions on the track, but ultimately, Probably just not enough. I think basically that's the crux of the whole problem I had in London. Simply not enough training, not enough mileage per week, not enough VO2 max sessions, and probably ultimately not enough long, slow runs. So let's move on to race nutrition. We'll talk a little bit about what I had before the race and my lead up to the race, uh, but mainly it's about what I eat during the race. Now, I'm not normally one for old school techniques, but um, I have taken on this idea of a carb depletion phase before a marathon. Now, that's only when I know I'm going to actually go for a, a marathon PB and I'm going to do everything I can to maximise my ability 
to get that PB. So in 2020, when I ran Goodwood, and in 2023, when I ran Paris and got my PBs there, my sub three hours, I spent three days at the beginning of the week on very low, if not zero carbs, very low carbs, let's say, for three days. And that's known as a carb depletion phase. Not many people do it anymore, basically because it's really annoying, it's horrible, feels awful for those three days. And relative to the gain that you get, probably not worth doing. But I've done it twice. This time I didn't do it because I knew I wasn't going to go for a marathon PB. It's not worth it. So I just had a normal diet. I didn't even really increase carbs that much towards the end of the week. Just a normal everyday run of the mill diet. Now, if I'm being completely honest, my standard run of the mill diet is possibly not great. You know, unless I'm really dedicated, unless I am really on the money, then uh, I don't eat terribly well. So, you know, things are adding up, aren't they? Poor training, not the greatest diet in preparation for the marathon. Race morning, I had a tin of rice pudding and some coffee. That's my standard breakfast in the morning when I'm gonna run a marathon. You don't wanna overfeed yourself like I have done in the past. You just wanna get the right amount of food in so you're full and so you don't feel bloated and uncomfortable when you start the race. So we come to the race itself. Now, anyone who watches this channel, you know exactly what I'm gonna say. I don't do gels. <laughs> I did, I used to, I tried them when I first started running years ago. I've tried SIS, I've tried Morton, I've tried lots of different kinds of gels. I don't like them. I mean, I don't like the texture. Morton gels particularly didn't like the texture, but generally I don't like the gloopiness and the stickiness of gels. They get all over your fingers as well, horrible things. And then they don't sit right on my stomach. You know, you might know this, that when you take a gel, you suddenly feel energized and you feel like you can go forever or you, you get a sudden spurt of energy. I don't get that. It's never happened. I've never taken a gel and gone, wow, and flown off. I just, it just doesn't happen. It basically sits in my stomach and makes me feel horrible and actually probably makes me run worse. I mean, I do understand about losing glycogen. I do understand that your muscles need glycogen. And it's not that I don't want to take anything during the race. I do feel like I probably should top up my glycogen stores. You know that they say that you've got about an hour and a half to two hours worth of running of stored glycogen before you run out. Um, and I get that, I understand. And, and so I do sometimes take something on a marathon run. But you know, when you're running a marathon, you're not running at VO2 max. You're running in zones three and four. And that gives plenty of scope for fat burning. And I like to think I am somewhat fat adapted and I can use my fat stores to maintain my pace at the top of zone three for quite a long time. And I think I've proven that that can be done, running on no gels, running on minimal fuel intake, and getting a sub three marathon. I did it at Goodwood in 2020. I did it in Paris in 2023. I also did it in Manchester in 2023. Although if you've seen that video, you will see that I did crash and burn badly in that, but I still got a sub three. So, you know, that, that is the top of my performance. That's the best I've ever done is 2.55 in Paris, 2.57 in Manchester. My best ever marathon performances have been on virtually no fuel. So the plan was, like in Goodwood in 2020 and like in Paris in 2023, for my wife to meet me at around 17, 18 miles and hand me a fizzy drink and half a banana. So that was the plan. And hopefully that would see me through to the end. Now, thinking about it, probably an hour, an hour and a quarter left of running maybe that is too late in the race to take on any fuel that's gonna really make a significant difference. I'm not sure. A Coke probably will digest into your system quite quickly. Fast acting, single molecule sugar get to work quickly. Maybe the banana would take too long to digest. So 
that's something to think about. But we did have a problem in this year's London Marathon. See, I'd started the race very well hydrated. <laughs> so much so that even though I went to the loo twice immediately before the start of the run, I got to one of the tunnels, oh, about 15 miles in, is it? Something like that. And I really needed a wee. So I had to stop at the port -a -loos in one of the tunnels. That cost me 30, 40 seconds. And then when I got to 18 miles and met my wife, she didn't see me and she wasn't ready for me. The thing is in London, the signal on your phone is diabolical with all those people trying to contact their friends and check the tracker to see where their runners are. So, you know, I can't blame Victoria too much for, for not knowing that I was nearly there. Uh, normally she would have the Coke and the banana there ready for me to collect and just run through and grab it and go. On this occasion, I could see her and I knew she couldn't see me. Um, and so I got to the railings, I got to where she was and she suddenly went, oh, you're there. And she had to dive into her bag and, and get the stuff that I needed out. And you can see a photo of me here, just standing at the railings, just waiting for her to get my Coke out of the bag. So that's another 30, 40 seconds lost there. You know, in the grand scheme of things, probably didn't make that much difference. But the other thing about it is, and we'll talk about mindset in a second, it just knocks you back a bit up here, doesn't it? So definitely things to learn about nutrition still, after all this time, we've still got things to learn. Maybe I could take fuel on board earlier. Um, and maybe I still need to find the right thing to take that's going to sit on my stomach. If you have any suggestions, if there's something that works for you that you think might work for me, please do drop it in the comments. And while we're on, if you're not subscribed to the channel, because I know 50% of you are not subscribed, we are at 24,000. I think the next one is 25, and then we need to think about 30,000 subscribers. So please do click that like button, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So let's move on, shall we, to arguably the most important part of running a marathon. What have you got up here? Your mindset, your attitude, your mental approach to the marathon, your psychological ability to push through when things get tough, and your pre-race nerves, your pre-race plan and confidence going into the race. All right, brain. You don't like me and I don't like you. But let's just do this and I can get back to killing you with beer. Many of you know me as an ultra runner. And the joke in ultra running is that uh, running an ultra is 90% psychological and the other 10% is in your head. And you can apply that to marathon running as well. You see, as well as the poor training in the build-up, as well as the questionable marathon nutrition, I went into the London Marathon just not believing I could do it. I didn't have the confidence, I was low on confidence having had the illness and the lack of training and I just didn't think I could get the time that I needed. I knew I couldn't get the time that I needed and so my confidence was low and therefore my motivation was low. My desire was therefore not as great and my dedication to the few weeks I had of training was not as great. You might remember in my previous Paris Marathon training series, we asked three questions. And the three questions were, um, one, what do you want to do? So is it something achievable, realistic? Is it a sensible goal that you want to achieve? Two, why do you want to achieve it? So the, the why, basically, why do you want this goal? And thirdly, how much do you want it? And that's possibly the most important question because it decides everything else for you. How much do you want this? For me, I'd already given up the goal of two hours, 50 minutes. That had gone long ago. And my next target was 3.15, but 3.15 was a relatively arbitrary target. I didn't, I didn't really want it enough because the only other goal would be to get a good for age or a Boston qualifier. Now a good for age for London, for my age group, is now three hours, 10 minutes. And I knew, I knew that was an unrealistic goal. There was no way I was gonna get that. But I thought I might just be able to get 3.15. The problem is, I just didn't want it enough. So we go into the London Marathon, low on confidence after poor training, 
low on self-belief, not really believing that I could do it and not having enough desire to want to do it. And then we start the race. And when we start the race, I have this plan that I am going to stick to 440 per kilometre the whole way, really lovely even splits all the way and then speed up in the last 10k. That was the plan. And that was actually all going really well until we got to the tunnel between the Isle of Dogs and Canary Wharf when I was dying for a wee so I had to stop and have a wee in the port and then when I came out of the tunnel my GPS had gone crazy and my next kilometre split was all wrong and that messed with my head big time. I mean, just look at those splits. They're absolutely beautiful. Within one or two seconds of each other, all the way until we get to that tunnel. And that 25th kilometer, oh, it's so depressing. Cause it wasn't, I mean, it was slower than 440 and it comes out at 410 for some reason. So, so that annoyed me and it, it upset me. And it, I know it shouldn't, but it just, it just did. And so that got on top of me. And then, of course, we come to mile 18 and I have to stop again because my wife isn't ready. So, and I know I keep talking, I'm not blaming her. I, I'm not blaming my wife. It's fine. She's a fantastic crew. I love her to bits, um, but I had to stop and that messed with my head as well. So hopefully you can see how all those things have combined together to mean that I couldn't run 250, I couldn't run 315 and I got what I got. I got what I deserved. So many things combine to make a marathon successful or not. Training and self-belief are by far the most important. Throw in a smattering of sleep and hydration and nutrition and you've got the perfect mix for marathon success. So that was my London Marathon and that's what happened. And I hope you can learn from those mistakes that I've made. So I'm going to leave you with what happened when I crossed the finish line of the London Marathon 2024, getting my medal and my thoughts after the race. Here you go. Page. Well done, oh, son. Well done. I don't know. Is it? 3232 ish. About the same as two years ago. Thank you so much. So people who've done all six Abbott Marathon Majors get their medals here. Yes, it is. Yes. Oh yeah, wait up in your home, baby. Yo, you taking a picture of me, taking oh, a picture of yes, you, taking a friend. picture of me, baby. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Oh, that was so hard today. Really, really exhausting last 10K. Do you know what? I really thought that I might be able to hold on to that pace, that 440 per kilometer pace. But once, you know, it's a classic thing. Once we got to 20 miles, I just couldn't do it. And it's, I, you know, it, I wonder how much of that is psychological and how much of that is fueling, how much of that is long run training. Don't know, really. Still don't know after 153 marathons, I've no idea. This year's medal looks like this. And I'm just about to get my drop bag. Well done, man. Uh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, just over there. Oh, yeah. Well organised, buddy. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks a lot. So I've just taken some time to get changed. Yeah, th that was such hard work today. The plan was, like, I didn't really know what I was good for. Like, Garmin said about 320 and Runner Lies said about... 322 I think I can't remember actually but around about there and you know that's eventually kind of what I did 323 I was hoping to get nearer 315 um, 
and I set out at a pace that would get me like if I kept on the pace at 440 I think that was around 316 pace and I honestly believed that I might be able to speed up in the last 10k and get 315 as it was it was the opposite and I, I maintained that pace and then 10k from the end I just slowed down and yeah it was, a, it was a grind again to the end as you know it's funny how often this happens isn't it it's just for some reason even though you're really experienced at marathons you've done loads of marathons it's just it happens 20k 20 miles comes and and you fall apart and it's it's an ongoing question so you know obviously I, I haven't done a proper training block so that's probably the main reason um, haven't probably done enough long distance training lo enough long 20 milers and stuff and and more uh, but I was hopeful that the 20 milers I'd done and the Brighton Marathon a couple of weeks ago might have been enough but uh, clearly not um, I don't think fueling was the issue you know I wasn't hungry throughout I, I just don't think I had it in my legs so I can't be too disappointed I think that's about the same time as I did two years ago and then I went on of course last year to do 255 and hopefully I, I can get close to three hours again in the next couple of years hopefully I, who knows who knows so that's marathon running and that is my sixth London marathon very pleased to do another London marathon very grateful as always to be able to do London marathon probably won't be here next year <laughs> cheers buddy thank you thank you very much gosh they're big that's a big ball today huge lucasade bottle today well done, man. I've got a drink I'm going to drink this a Red Bull and I'm going to go and get a coffee at Nero I'm going to be full of liquid again thank you very much for watching this year's London Marathon 2024 was another tough one but it's another one in the bag 153 marathons or further for me now if you want to see me run the Brighton Marathon that I did a couple of weeks ago click that link right there guys thank you very much for watching subscribe to the channel if you're not already and I'll see you guys on the start line next time bye bye